Hey, what's up guys, Auto Fanatic. So today's video, I finally got my hands on a Tesla Model 3 dual motor performance. I'm gonna just go over this thing. It's the first time I've ever gotten into one of these cars. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it's super impressive. I only drove it for a couple of minutes right now, but I'm just gonna show you guys quick, a little bit of the walk around. I mean, this is a pretty basic car. There's not a lot of fanciness in terms of the design of it, but uh, what's really interesting, this one, the Model 3 performance dual motor, it's got the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S in 20 inch wheels and tires. And uh, this one's in a pearlescent white. I'll just show you the interior real quick if I can figure out how to open this door. So you can see it's very scarce. There's no buttons, there's no knobs. This is basically the future. This is technology taking everything, everything over. Look at it. I mean, it's, it's definitely not, I really like the white leather interior. This is definitely unique. Uh, you don't really get white on any option today on any car. So I'm going to get the camera in the car and I'm going to go for a drive. I'm not going to go over all the tech, but I'm going to get in the car and I'm going to show you some of the tech as far as the computer screen and what this stuff does, because it's pretty impressive. I mean, I'm not a big tech person, you know, with anything in my life. I really like to keep things pretty basic, um, but I think this is the wave of the future and the technology and engineering in this car is simply mind blowing. So. You're going to hear some comments about how this car reacts to other cars that I've driven. Like I said, this is an all-wheel drive car. It's an electric vehicle. It has a crazy amount of power, uh, but the power delivery, the handling, everything is very, very different than anything else that I've ever driven in my life. So let's just give you a quick little walk around in the car. You can see it doesn't have a grill. It doesn't really have much of a grill. This is all done, I guess, for aerodynamics. They're trying to make the car as efficient as possible, you know, being that it is a full EV. This is not considered a hybrid. All right, guys, so we're inside the Tesla Model 3 Performance. So before you get started with this car, and this is, I'm learning it along the way, you have to have this little black card, and you have to tap it somewhere over here, and you have to have your foot on the pedal, so that'll, like, turn the car on. So I just want to show you some cool stuff, because when you, there's no buttons, there's no switches, there's no levers, really, anywhere. Uh, the seats do have switches on the sides of them, so we're going to go over to the steering wheel, and you're going to use the button here, and it's just a scroll wheel, which is pretty cool. This actually reminds me of the old scroll wheel on the old BlackBerry cell phones we used, you know, 10, 15 years ago. So this is pretty interesting. So this is how you do. This one doesn't do anything. So you're just going to go up and down uh, to go in and out. Oh, there we go. So you push it left to right. So this is actually pretty clever, pretty intuitive. So we're going to keep that to where it is. Uh, your mirrors, same situation. So we got the mirror here. And you just scroll the wheel like I'm showing you, and that's going to adjust your door mirrors. Now, I'm going to shut this air off a little bit. So we're on speed four. So right now the car is on. Uh, and then driving, we're going with the driving mode. So you have acceleration. You have the option of chill or sport. So we're going to leave it in sport. Steering mode, you have comfort standard and sport. Regenerative braking, we're going to leave that low. Uh, stopping mode, we're going to have hold. Track mode, I don't know what this does. Uh, track mode enables the performance oriented stability control to be kit for track driving. This is used for experienced track drivers familiar with the course. Do not use on public roads. Okay, so I'm not going to mess with that right now because uh, I don't want to have an accident. So it's got autopilot, it's got all this stuff. So we're going to get out of this menu and uh, we'll go to the seats. That's the heated seat portion, which we're not going to use. Music. And it does all this crazy stuff. So it's, it's just like having a an iPad Pro in the car, so it's got everything pretty touch sensitive and it's very, very fast. It's not lagging. You got karaoke, you got Spotify, you got streaming. It's, I mean, it's got the technology is just unbelievable. So, if you're big into tech, you know, with your lifestyle and you love apps and you love to play with your iPhone and your iPad Pro and your iMac, and you know, you're really, really into this, this car definitely appeals to you know that type of an audience. I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge petrol head, and this is a very, very unique and new experience for me to be in something like this. But, you know, when you're looking at the interior, I mean, this is like 60 grand. You don't have, you know, any nice styling. You don't have nice leather wrapped dash or top of the door. So the interior does feel very, you know, lower end in that regard. And I think really what you're paying for is the technology. That's really what this is all about. It's the battery power, the torque, the handling, and all the bells and whistles that, you know, make up this car. Uh, the car is made of aluminum and steel, so it's got, you know, definitely a little bit of, I would call, a hybrid construction in that regard. But uh, I got to tell you, it's pretty cool. So I'm going to get the camera set up, and we're going to go for our first drive, and you're going to hear some of my comments on this because this is, 
going to be my very first EV vehicle uh, featured on the Auto Fanatic YouTube channel. And there's going to be more content on this car. I would like to do a video, a video, video series of living with a Tesla Model 3 performance daily. Maybe I'll do a multiple set of videos over a couple of days. Uh, maybe do some detailing videos as well. Uh, the car looks really, really easy to clean and definitely easy to detail. So this would be a lot of fun. So let me get the camera set up and we'll go for a drive. All right. So we got the camera set up and of course this thing is driving me nuts. Okay. There we go. The console. Close lid gently. Okay. So we're going to get the little black credit card. We're going to put it over here. Definitely putting my seatbelt on for this one because this thing is going to haul ass. All right, put the uh, AC, get that going. I'm gonna try to keep it lower uh, temperature. Let's get the temperature. Go down to 65. Okay, we're gonna go back to the car driving mode. So right, we're gonna leave this open. We're gonna leave this open with the driving modes in case I decide to mess with it along the way. Uh, but let's just try chill for acceleration. I'm just curious you just push the button you actually feel the pedal get firmer so let's see what this does okay this really tones it down wow okay so this is probably what you're going to want to do let me just put this put this somewhere this is probably what you're going to want to do if you're in stop and go traffic you're going to want to probably put the acceleration in chill mode i don't think you're going to want to put it in sport because you're going to probably hit somebody Unless you're really, really used to the power in this thing. But this is really weird for me, I tell you. So I, I think this was a great opportunity to uh, shoot a video on this car because a lot of my fans and customers that buy the Auto Fanatic Car Care and you know we contact, we talk all the time through Instagram and, and YouTube have these cars and they're all like, hey, Phil, you got to get your hands on one. Let me know what you think of it compared to your Alfa Romeo and all the other cars you get to work on and, and own. But... Uh, so the chill mode is definitely, definitely cool. Very linear. Let me just hit it hard. Hold on. Yeah, you see this, this feels good. This feels very normal, okay? The one thing I'm gonna tell you now, the, the handling of this thing, it's absolutely incredible. Now, this is a dual motor. So you got a motor in the front and you got a motor in the rear. Now, the first time I got in this car about 30 minutes ago, I just took it around the block just to see how this thing functioned. And the one thing I notice is that this has incredible steering, handling, and the reactivity of the chassis. And what I mean by that, the only other car that I've ever been in that actually feels this reactive is my Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio and any of the modern mid-engine Ferrari, you know, supercars. Okay? It's just a feel. Like, unless you drive those cars and you understand the difference in the feel, you know, basic, basically this is an all-wheel drive car. This does not feel anything like any of the RS model Audis. It doesn't feel like anything from Porsche, from BMW, Mercedes. It just has a totally, totally different feel, okay? But it's just the way this thing reacts, it's just unbelievable. And we're still in chill mode, so we're gonna, we're gonna get on chill mode. Let's go into sport mode. Oh my God. <laughs> And I'm like looking for paddles and I'm looking for a shifter and I don't have it. So I'm like a little, a little lost here, but oh my God. You hear this whistling sound. I feel like I'm in the Jetsons cartoon. If anybody remembers that, it's an old cartoon I used to watch growing up in the eighties. Uh, they used to have these spacecraft cars flying around space. It was, it was really cool. So it's kind of cool to be in one right now and to feel like that. But yeah, you hear this little, it's like a turbine whine. Oh my God. Wow, that actually snapped my neck really hard back. Holy cow. Yeah, we gotta get this thing onto the highway and I uh, wanna open it up. But I'm gonna tell you now, this thing is gonna deliver the torque and the power far better and far more efficient than any gasoline powered car. That, that's really what it's all about. And I was, I actually can't believe that Tesla, you know, has made these cars so damn fast. I just can't believe it because I don't think or I, maybe I don't know much about the EV market, but I didn't think that they would be targeting that type of audience to go out and buy these things for performance. But after driving this thing for a couple of minutes now, I really think the technology is only going to get better. And once this starts trickling down into you know brands that we all get enthusiastic and emotional about, like Porsche, Ferrari, Lamborghini, you know, I think you know ten years, maybe maybe sooner. 
uh, there's going to be supercars that are going to have this technology that it's just going to blow your mind. It really is. You know, they're, they're going to probably have, you know, these exotic cars, you know, with 2,000 horsepower electric motors, you know, four electric hybrid motors, and it's going to be absolutely off the charts. Oh, my God. Steering mode, wearing sport. Let's put it in comfort, see what that does. Oh, wow, okay. I want to tell you now, the steering on this car and the way this thing feels, now you're also getting that steering effect, not just from the electric power steering, but you're also getting it from like the way the motors are balancing the torque from wheel to wheel. There's definitely something going on there. And it's so intuitive that you don't really feel it, but it feels so telepathic and so responsive that it's unlike anything you'll ever drive as far as any you know standard car today. So we're going to put that in, let's put it in standard mode. All right, standard mode gets a little bit heavier. Sport mode gets heavier but sharper. Okay, that's what I like. Regenerate brake, we're, we're not going to mess with that. But I got to tell you, so now we're on some bumpy roads, look. And it soaks it up like nothing. Some of those rattles are probably coming from the interior and stuff that's in the back. But it's not harsh at all. Wow, look at this. And that, that really, a lot of this is coming from suspension design and also the design of the monocoque structure. And I think a lot of the strength of this vehicle or all of these vehicles from Tesla really lies in the flat chassis panel that's where it houses all the battery cells. But Jesus, oh my God. So we have your, I, I believe that's the range of the car. Yeah, it's definitely not the range of my phone. So 176 miles, that's our range before we run out of juice. And I think with something like this, with something like me, I'm probably gonna have to charge this thing up every day because I'm gonna be in it all the time as far as getting that power. Actually, I'm gonna loop back around and get on that road. You know, having the Michelin Sport, Pilot Sport 4S tires on here and uh, you know, 20 inch wheels and, and the way this chassis is set up, it may be a little bit cheating as far as my God, holy shit, this thing is unbelievable. I still keep looking for a paddle because I want to downshift, you know, going into a corner. Wow, you just get that whoosh. Yeah, this thing is wild, man. This is really, really wild. And it takes some getting used to. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I'm, you know, trying to restrain myself because I don't want to end up in a tree. But, oh, my God. It's like you just, I just tapped it. And the car just goes. Wow. This is, but you know what it is? I'm actually having fun. That's something that I always dismissed with EV cars because I've never driven them. I always dismiss it as being fun for a performance or enthusiastic type of buyer. But I'm gonna tell you now, man, this thing really, really is impressing me. It's like the agility, the handling, how telepathic this car reacts. Oh my God. This is wild. This is definitely, definitely wild. So, okay, we're gonna get back over here. Oh man, very, very cool. We're gonna go back into chill mode, go into comfort. So now we're at the, the toned down version of the Tesla Model 3 performance. It's just weird, I'm, I keep looking for a paddle uh, I, I'm just so used to it with the Alfa Romeo every day, daily driving that and even my Stelvio. Uh, I haven't really felt the, the urge for a shifter, like a manual shifter. But uh, I'm almost curious if in the future, will they ever make high performance electric vehicles with a gearbox where the owner could actually upshift and downshift and really you know get a little bit more interaction with the driving experience. I would love to know if that is on the wave of the future. I don't really know, but that could be definitely fun. You know, starting out, you know, even if it was like four speeds, you know, you don't really need that much, but just to have something and put some paddles in the car. So it makes the transition from a typical gasoline powered car a little bit easier. 
you know, this isn't a luxury car at all. So it's not the quietest car. I think the Model S, when you start getting that with all the bells and whistles, it's definitely a little bit more luxurious as far as uh, what you get with soundproofing, audio system, and some of the bells and whistles. But oh, this thing is cool, man. Oh, look at this. It actually senses. Look at this. I just noticed this now. It's sensing all the vehicles that are around my proximity. <laughs> this thing is wild, man. I tell you, this is wild. Now, we're going to go back in the sport mode. We're going to go back here. So now we're in the sport setting. We're going to put that there. We're not going to put the music on. Let's go back. Let's just leave this open. Drive modes. Yeah, the blinker stock feels really nice. Not something that, you know, you would ever hear me talk about, but I just wanted to report back on it in the video, if anybody cared to know. I don't really like this. These, uh, this plastic panel here and there, they were giving me a little issues getting those closed. Um, they just feel a little, you know, cheap. Actually reminds me a lot of the uh, Cadillacs from, you know, a number of years ago. They did the black piano plastic. Oh, boy. Oh, he's not coming after me. I didn't, I didn't do anything wrong yet, but uh, all right, we're going to take it easy. Let the police officer go. Jesus Christ. You know, it's weird. Like, you, you hit the throttle. I'm going to call it throttle. I don't know whatever you call it in these things. You hit the throttle, and it just, shoo, it goes, and then you let off of it, and it still continues to go, which means that, like, these motors feel like they're almost, like, free revving. Like, there's, there's nothing restraining holding them back with, like, a gearbox or a gearing mechanism. You know, whereas gearing, you know, possibly could make something like this maybe not as efficient. But I think in the future, you know, having a, some sort of a gearbox might be a little bit more interactive. But I'm going to be honest with you, this thing is fun. <laughs> the suspension and the handling and the steering is a home run. It, it's, it's really that impressive. Now, if only other automakers would, like get one of these cars and kind of see what exactly they did with the design of everything and kind of make their cars drive close to this because uh, there's not many cars that have that very sharp some people are going to say it's nervous it's twitchy and it may not appeal to a lot of people but then you can just you know switch it over into comfort mode but let me get it back into sport I just want to show you guys as soon as some of these cars ease up you see my hands on the wheel okay it's it's the reactivity that when you just do a little bit of an input, I could feel it in my pelvis, the way the car is just generating all that grip. It's just unbelievable. There's like no roll. And if there is roll, it's happening so smooth and so seamlessly that it's not taking away from the confidence. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Once again, I keep looking for a downshift paddle. This is so weird. I don't know how many days it would take for me to drive something like this for me to accept it in my head psychologically that, hey, there is no transmission and there's no paddles. But uh, I'm sure it would probably take me a couple of days. It's just, you know, your, your memory of your motor skills every day when you get into a car. It's going to differ when you get into something like this. But we're on the highway. We're at 60, 60 something miles an hour. It's super smooth. It's not bumpy. Uh, wind noise and road noise could be better. You know, I was expecting probably a little bit, but we have a full glass roof. That could have something to do with it. And also, the Michelin tires aren't always the quietest tires. So that's just a sacrifice you get for performance. I mean, it just changes lanes like you're in a video game. It really does. Like you're playing a video game. My God, this thing is wild. Holy shit. Yeah, this gets up to, uh, this gets up to illegal speeds very, very quickly. Yeah, there's just no room over here. You know, I can't really, can't really push it. Cause there's just no room. But it's definitely cool to have the power. I'm going to tell you that now. All right, we'll jab it to the right. Yeah, it's just, man, the way it transitions. Yeah, this is wild. This would actually be a really, really fun car to go on a very long road trip. Like if I was to go from like New York to uh, 
drive it to New York to the Carolinas or something, this would be a fun car to be in for 10 hours. Seats are very comfortable. Uh, they don't have very deep bolsters, but I haven't been sliding at all since I've been driving it, which is a good thing. So I'm like off the accelerator right now, and it'll, it'll continue to coast, and then you'll have to just tap it every now and then to continue your rate of speed. That's just what I'm noticing. But damn, damn, when you jab it. Yeah, this is a wild experience, man. I tell you, I, I, I've dismissed these cars for a very long time, and, and it's really cool to ex finally experience this one because it's small, it's compact. It kind of, you know, it's kind of in the same class of car, like, like my Alfa Romeo as far as the size, you know, scale of it. But the fact that it's got that razor-sharp feel and it's all-wheel drive, that's impressive. See, like always right here, I always downshift it twice and then whip it through the corners, but there's no nothing to downshift. Definitely, definitely wild. So I just texted my buddy before. I was like, hey, let's do a race between this and your modified Dodge Charger Hellcat. <laughs> I think that could be fun. I, I know this for a fact. This thing will smoke it. It'll totally smoke it all off the line. I think this is like zero to 60 in like three seconds. And I'm gonna tell you now, it definitely feels it. And then I got the Model uh, the Model S Plaid, which I don't think there's any car in the world that could outperform that as far as in straight line performance. So, and we're talking about, you know, multi-million dollar hypercars can't even come close to what that thing is doing. All right, guys, just finished the uh, drive portion of the video. The traffic is just too intense today for me to go any further, but I gotta tell you something, this car really, really impressed me in a lot of ways, and I wanna talk to you a little bit about it now at the conclusion of this video. So, you know, when I look at the car, I don't get excited uh, because of the styling of the car. It's just not something that appeals to me. Also, I also buy a lot of my cars based on heritage and emotion and style. So, you know, like I said, Tesla isn't racing, maybe in the future they will, but you really have to give respect to Elon Musk and also for the brand for what he has created with the technology. The technology is phenomenal. I really think it's on the verge of being trickled down into the automotive industry, you know, much greater than it is right now. And I think that's going to be the wave of the future. But, you know, my opinion, if I was the one that was in charge of this type of business or this type of, you know, industry, personally, if I was Elon Musk, and if I hope somebody would listen to this, I would pretty much hire a design house, Pininfarina, to basically give them this platform or any platform you're working on and let them stylize this into the most sexy, incredible, high performance, whether you want to do a sedan or a coupe, but just have a real design house design this thing into something that's just gorgeous. No matter whether you're a, a Ferrari fan, Porsche fan, or just someone that just loves good design, you're just gonna to wanna to be gravitated to something like that. And you also trickle that effect on the design also into the interior, which is also pretty scarce. But a couple of negatives that I come from this video, uh, like I said, the interior is what it is. This is not a luxury car, but the one thing I noticed, uh, build quality, you know, seems okay, but the roads of New York are so intense and they're so brutalizing on almost any car. I don't know how well this car would hold up after, you know, three to five years as far as hitting potholes and smashing it around with the suspension. So, so when you actually hit bumps on the roads in New York, which, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty brutalizing on cars. I don't care what kind of car you have, whether it's a Mercedes S-Class or a Tesla or a BMW. So when you hit bumps with the suspension, you do get a little bit of a shock coming into the cabin, which means that the shock absorbers on this car, they don't have a very good rebound effect from the impact, okay? That's just something that I notice. Uh, that's something that possibly could be improved, but there's been a lot of cars over the years that don't work very well on the driving conditions of the New York City area. So that's not just, you know, Tesla, Mercedes has cars like that, BMW. So yeah, even I did a video on a BMW 750 a couple of years ago and I hit a pothole and it had the same shock coming into the cabin and that was the top of the line seven series. So it really comes down to suspension geometry, design, engineering, and just, you know, any attributes. But like I said, I think what you're paying for in this car is ultimately the technology of an efficient, high performance EV. And something that I take away from this video is that I did, I always dismissed EVs as being fun. I always dismissed them as performance. You know, no, you got to have a performance car. You got to have, you know, noise, you got to have a shifter and all that. So now 
this was a little bit of a different experience for me to drive and actually have some fun with, but the telepathic response of the chassis, the steering, the power delivery is so damn instant and it's also linear and you could adjust it you know through the through the modes over here that we, we went through with the drive modes um it actually makes this ev a fun car now the thing you got to be careful about it's got so much power and torque and in your transitioning through everything so quickly you have to make sure that you're going to drive this thing spiritedly on an open road because if you're in traffic and you know, you're really on this thing aggressively, you're gonna probably smash into somebody in front of you. That's just my opinion. And that's where you're gonna have to switch from, you know, sport back over to chill and just tone it down a little bit, especially for the New York City area. But the fact that this thing has potential to be fun and exciting coming from someone that is all about performance. I own all performance cars my whole life. I never owned, you know, anything like this. This is totally new to me. I think this is gonna be the wave of the future, and I think. If this technology gets trickled down into brands that you know car enthusiasts like you guys out there and myself get passionate about, Mercedes, Porsche, BMW, Ferrari, Lamborghini, you know, I think in the future it's gonna be insane. And I think the technology is happening so quickly. And these automakers are all tooling up now for this next transition of adapting to hybrid and EV vehicles by 2030. I think it's going to be very, very impressive. Um, one little thing that I told you in the video, I'll keep looking for a, a shift paddle. I think in the future, most likely, you know, you may see this from the performance brands like Porsche and Lamborghini and Ferrari. If they were to able to design something like this and put a gearbox, some sort of a, a gear mechanism where you would have the paddles and you could upshift and downshift and kind of use that power band a little bit differently, it's going to be un unbelievable. I think people are going to make the transition from gasoline-powered cars into EVs, especially us performance enthusiasts, and I think it's going to be more of a seamless transition when they start adapting a little bit more technology and making it a little bit more adaptable going from one type of car to the next. But I got to tell you, this was a super fun experience. I, I am blown away. Uh, like I said, like I said, the interior quality, like some of the stuff here, like I don't like this, the rattles and the creaks and stuff like that. And I was expecting the cabin to be a little bit quieter, but we're on Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. You know, we have a lot of glass in this car. This car is also built in California. I don't think they over soundproofed it the way they do with like, you know, some of these cars today with the heavy, thick rubber mats. Uh, I think they were trying to keep the weight down and keep everything to a minimum because the batteries and everything else add so much weight and so much mass to the structure of the car. But I got to tell you, you know, if you're into something unique, you want something different, go out and try to drive one of these. I mean, it took me a couple of years for me to finally get my hands on a performance model. A couple of my neighbors have the very, very base model of this, and I asked one of them to go for a ride, you know, a few years ago. I wasn't very impressed, but the performance model, dual motor, definitely, definitely is impressive. So I hope you guys like this video. Please subscribe to the Autofanatic channel, and if anybody out there that watches this video you know, like I said, I don't show any of this EV stuff on the Auto Fanatic channel, but if you want to see more content on the Tesla Model 3 Performance, post it in the comment section below. I want to hear from you guys. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, definitely would love to do some drag races between a couple of my other cars and friends of mine cars, you know, zero to 60 to kind of see what this does. The whole question is, where can we safely do that in the New York area? I don't really know, but this was totally fun. And I think, you know, another cool video would be how... Can someone like me that only drives petrol cars every day, how could I live with something like this for one, two, three, or four days driving this in a, in a row? And I think it would probably be a pretty seamless transition, you know, to get in, you put your key over here and you just hit, hit the road and go. Uh, but I don't know how it is to live with something like this as far as like the range now is down to 155 miles. I most likely by the end of the day, I'm going to have to charge it. How does the charging situation work? I don't know. I haven't ever charged a Tesla before, but it's definitely super cool. And I think this is the wave of the future. I also would love to show you guys soon a wash video and some detailing content. I think this car would be super easy and fun to detail based on the actual shape and organic lines of the car as far as polishing it, claying it, and throwing a set of wax or even a ceramic coating. So if you guys want to see that content, post it in the comments below and stay tuned for more content. And I'll see you guys in the next video soon. Thanks, guys.